Okay. Everyone here, you ready for Abdullah? Okay. We are going to get started with Havdalah. I'm going to invite one of our kids here to hold the candle. Sarah, come hold the candle. Here, hold on, hold it on, on the mat here. Let me come inside. Where I'm holding, not, not for the body. Together. I'm for the one that you can have. Wait, no. Okay, we're going to begin. Okay, everyone have the love. Mati, please stand up. So again, Shavua Tov, a good week, and we're always, after Shabbos, we feel uh, uplifted, energized, connected, and ready to go into the new week, and in the same way that we bring in the Shabbos and raise our uh, spirits to the Shabbos with Kiddush, we do the Havdalah to be able to bring the Shabbos into the week successfully, and tonight, the meal that we eat is supposed to be, it's called Sudas David Malka Mashiach. It's called the, the meal of Mashiach. So after Shabbat, not only we're ready to go into the week, we're ready to bring Mashiach and make, uh, make redemption happen. So Abdullah will help us bring all this beautiful feeling and holiness, and we representing the whole community together. Shame, 
Another one of the great Hasidic Rebbes, one of the more famous ones, going back in the uh, in the third generation of the Hasidic leadership. And the Rebbe is a Matul Chernobyler, a Matul of the city of Chernobyl. We all know of Chernobyl as the nuclear reactor where. That, uh, that, it, that in Russia that exploded and it contaminated many large areas. But Chernobyl had a different nuclear reaction when there was a Matal Chernobyl, Nachum Chernobyl, some of the great Hasidic leaders uh, in their own rights, each in their own rights, who were led a community from there and, and inspired many and obviously had many stories of uh, miracles, etc. So this story goes that there was a fellow, his name was Beryl Rappaport. He lived in a town called Haskin, which was not far from Chernobyl. And he was a very religious fellow, prayed three times a day with the minion, went to all the shiurim that were in the shul, all the classes that were going in the shul between Mincha Mayrev. He worked very hard. He made a modest living, was able to put away 10% for charity and did it very, very well. And on top of that, he was a follower of Matal Chernobyl, and he was very much in connection with him. He used to travel to Chernobyl, which was not far very often, and he used to get inspiration all the time, felt very close. One time, there was tremendous news in this little town of Chaskin that Matal Chernobyl is coming to visit. In the past, when Matal Chernobyl came to visit, he stayed in this barrel Rappaport's house. But Bell Rapport got a message that the, the Rebbe will not be staying in his house. He's staying in another house. And not only is he not staying in his house, but the Rebbe forbids him to show up 
by any of the events going on in this other house and come to him for private audience or anything unless he comes up with the sum of 2,000 rubles, an enormous sum. Ben Rapport was thinking, if I sold my house and everything I own, I would maybe get a thousand ruble. How is the Rebbe asking me to do 2,000 ruble? And he didn't know what to do. And the Rebbe came to the town and the whole town was talking about it. And they were going to visit the Rebbe and they heard his, his talks and they spent Shabbos with him. Ben Rapport could not be there. And he felt very low by himself. And the only thing he wanted more than anything else was to be reunited with his Rebbe, to be able to be with him and get the inspiration and feel the holiness. And he felt terrible. So he wanted to get 2,000 rubles because he knew until he gets 2,000 rubles, the Rebbe doesn't want to see him. So not long after, there was another big news in the little town of Chaskin that the army is passing through the town and they gave an order that everyone, the soldiers can sleep wherever they want. Everyone has to open up their homes and house soldiers. And that night came and there was dread because usually they were not friendly, the soldiers, the army, but they knew they had no choice. And they got a, a, a knock on the door in his house and a few soldiers came and they said, we're sleeping here tonight. And they brought in a few pieces of luggage and a chest and they put it down and they went to sleep. In the middle of the night, all the soldiers had, were woken up we tried to move on and they moved on. And Ribeiro goes into the room where the soldiers were and he sees they left a chest. He said, listen, they're gonna come back and get it. The next day, the whole town is being scoured. The whole town is being searched and they're looking for the, the soldiers left the chest and they go to every house, but somehow they pass by Ribeiro's house several times and nothing, no one comes in. He says, no one comes in, I'm not saying anything. And months pass, everyone forgets about the soldiers. No one ever comes back looking to the town again for a chest. So the barrel says, if it's going already six months and nothing happened, maybe, let me take a look what's inside this chest. He opens up the chest and lo and behold, it's full of gold coins, full of money, rubles, not gold coins, full of rubles. So he says, maybe Hashem answered my prayers, I should be wealthy. Look, he put in my hands money. I cannot take 2,000 rubles and go to the Rebbe. So he takes 2,000 rubles and he goes to the Rebbe. When he goes to the Rebbe, he presents the money. So the Rebbe said, Beryl, where did you get this money from? You're not a man of means. How did you get 2,000 rubles? So he told him the whole story. So the Rebbe says, this is God's gift to you. This wealth is God's gift to you. I want to tell you the whole story. Why did I give out a ruling that you cannot show up when I came to town, you can't meet me. You have to get 2,000 rubles. He says, I saw in heaven that they, you were such a good person that in heaven they decreed that you should be a wealthy man. But there was one problem that you never in your prayers ever asked Hashem for wealth. You're always satisfied with what you had and you never asked Hashem for wealth. And in heaven, they don't give you unless you ask. You never asked. So I felt I have to do something to somehow get you to ask Hashem for wealth, but I couldn't tell you. So that's why I told you, you have to ask 2,000 rubles. And obviously it worked. You started to pray and Hashem delivered it to your house. And he said, now that you made this wealth, leave the town of Chaskin, go to a bigger city. He advised him to go into a certain wholesale business and Hashem will give you a big bracha. And he did, and he became very, very wealthy. He took whatever money he had there, and he became much wealthier. And he became a big bald sadaka, a very charitable person. And actually became the scion of a great family, the Rappaport family. Well known in, the, in, in, in Russia, the Rappaport family were big bali sadaka, very charitable people. All started with this very humble mm -hmm. Bar Rappaport, who was too humble to ask Hashem for wealth. But Hashem wants to give all of us wealth. But he was, we'll, we'll take the wealth and we'll give tzedakah with it. And we'll help uh, Jewish, we'll help Jewish education. And we'll help build shuls. And we'll help make children, Jewish children have more Yiddishkeit in their lives. And we'll help uh, sick people. And we'll help hungry people. Hashem wants us all to have wealth. But when it comes to times like this, when we say, Abdullah, we pray for something. And every day when we pray, we have to ask Hashem. 
as a Jew, we ask nothing, nothing less. Give us not just parnasah, give us wealth that we can bring more mitzvahs in this world, make more Jews connected to their Judaism, make the world a better place because we'll take Hashem's blessing and turn it into greater blessings as well. But I want to wish, as we are going into this week, that Hashem should give us a blessing that we should only obviously have our health and our together with our family, we shall be well and safe and good, but as well that we should have not only parnasah, but we should have wealth and we should be able to, to do everything we need to do with a full heart and, and, and in a complete way and uh, be able to, to give us obviously the biggest wealth, the wealth of the beautiful base Hamidash, the beautiful temple. So we'll be able to be there together to serve Hashem all as one. So I want to wish you all a Shavua Tov. We love you all. We wish all the best things. Join us for all the beautiful things we're doing on Zoom very soon. Maybe even this week, we're going to start our first minion in, in Chabad Outdoors. So there's a lot of exciting things happening. Let's be together and let's be strong and let's give strength to all others who are with us here on Zoom and on Facebook and beyond. Hashem Yivarech et Amo Shalom. We'll finish off. Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hatishvi. Eliyahu 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 Agilati. God tells Jacob, Don't be afraid. When we go out into the world, don't be afraid. Hashem is with us. He's watching us. Amen. He loves us. He embraces us. And he's going to give us all the best. All the best. Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov. Everyone be well. Bye, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.